Hi, I'm Nancy O'Neill. Today on Suncoast FYI, we talk to the race director of the Porchlight 5K, the executive director of Hope for Communities, a preview of Tropiflora Spring Festival, and the president of the Whiskey Obsession Festival. All next on Suncoast FYI. I think it's fitting to say we're starting our show at the starting line today. Kim Gibbons is the race director of the Porchlight 5K and she's here right now to tell us about it in anticipation of who's going to finish first or cross the finish, finish line. line. Yes, okay. we don't care. Well, we do. They probably care who finishes first. Okay. We don't. They we don't. just want people to finish. To join. To join, to join yes. In. Okay. So could you start by telling us what the, the race is, what the 5K Porchlight race Okay, the Porchlight 5K mm -hmm. is a one mile and a 5K fun run. So you can run, you can walk. It's on April 28th at Siesta Beach. It's, the fun run starts at 7.30 and the 5K starts at 8. It was started in order to raise money for a safe house here in Florida for girls that have been rescued from sex trafficking. So we are trying to raise money for them. Mm -hmm. And so the more people we have, the more money we can raise. And it's a family friendly, come all, just you okay. can run, you can walk. We okay. don't care, we just want you there. Okay, so there's there's two separate races. Yes. There's the one, the one mile, just a fun run. A lot, a lot of the kids run that one. Okay. We have some people who don't run, they don't walk very far, but they mm -hmm. can do a mile. Mm -hmm. So that one's first okay. and it's um, just, Participants come, little kids run, they get a little medal when they finish, oh, and cute. then, yeah, they're so cute. cute. So, yes, who can participate then? Is anyone can. Everyone? We, anybody who's able to, it's, we love to have families. We uh, have a large group of um, senior adults that come and mm -hmm. walk the one mile. Some mm -hmm. of them even walk I the like 5K, it. yeah. Like and it. so then we also have some racers. Um, this past year, we had uh, several people who were made it their spring race for their couch to 5K mm -hmm. uh, training. They'd been training for a 5K, so our race was their their finish kind of of their program like training. It. So it was fun. It's a it's just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's welcoming. It's easy. There's no pressure to be first or. In fact, we have three ladies that are the caboose. There's, they have a flag, they have one that had a sunflower last year. They walk the very end, so no one is last. Our girls are last. Aww. So no matter how oh, slow you so are, sweet. you're not last. That's yes. so sweet. So tell us more about where, where the money that you raise for this goes, please. Okay, the money goes to, we are supporting uh, Florida Baptist Children's Home has a ministry called One More Child Anti-Trafficking. Mm -hmm. It was used to be called The Porch Light. And it is for a safe house here in Florida for girls that have been um, usually taken in by DCF for sex trafficking. Um, and then they are placed in this home where they receive um, social work. There's social workers, there's physicians, there's counselors, there's mentors there to try and restore them both physically, mentally, and spiritually, mm -hmm. and just to help them heal from the trauma that they've been through with um, at trafficking. Okay, now how long do you typically um, have someone go through your program, Kim? Um, they usually have, I think it's nine months. They're not, we're not, it's not a lockdown program, mm -hmm. so the girls can leave if they wish, and sure. many of them do. Um, the home does have a horse, they have horse therapy, and so oh. one girl who ran away came back just because of the horse. So they do a fantastic job since they opened about five years ago. I think mm -hmm. they've had a about 350 girls come through. They house five to six at a time. Mm -hmm. Each girl has her own room. And so we are, um, I have a running club. We meet on Wednesdays over at First Sarasota, uh, just right across the street. Mm -hmm. And um, we were asked to help raise money for this group. And so we started this 5K porch light in order to raise money to help support this safe house for these girls that need restoration. Absolutely. Now, how can our community get involved? You said that, you know, you Our community help. can get involved, first of all, by coming. We okay. would love to have more than we've ever had before. Mm -hmm. um, we've been averaging about 300 participants for the last five years. We would love to have more. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of our hardcore runners here in Sarasota County don't like beach runs, um, but we would love to have them come. We'd lo also love to have people who 
aren't part of the running community to come. Those that just want to come out and spend the morning on the beach, walk the beach for us, right. have some food afterwards. We have door prizes, we have raffles. It's just a fun morning and Siesta is so beautiful it anyway. Is. So yeah. why not go and do it for a good cause yep. and raise some money. Um, we also need some corporate sponsors. Uh, okay. We are always looking for businesses who want to give us some money because all of our funds beyond the cost of setting up our race goes straight to the porch light. So it costs about six or seven thousand dollars to put on the race oh and anything gosh. we make beyond that it goes straight to them. We don't make any don't profit. Keep. We don't keep it. We get it, send it all to them. That's so awesome. if anyone's any businesses are willing to like help sponsor us we would be glad to have Give them. you a call and we'll put all of your information. Yes up that would so be awesome. We would appreciate it so much. It. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Have fun with race. Oh it's gonna be so much fun. Okay. <laughs> Pam Hahn, the executive director of Hope for Communities, will join me right after the break. Stay tuned, you're watching Suncoast FYI. Hope for Communities is a wonderful organization based here on the Suncoast. Executive director Pam Hahn joins me. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Nancy. Could you please tell me and our viewers what the Hope for Communities organization is all about? I would love to. Um, Hope for Communities is best known for our Day for Hope. It's a back to school readiness program for homeless children and those in need. That you started? Yeah. How many years ago? Um, we're in our 10th year. That's awesome. I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, we partner the local churches with the local elementary schools to serve the kids who are homeless and in need of our program. And um, last year we served 2,324 children between Sarasota and Manatee County. Wow. And we're hoping to serve 2,675 this year. Unfortunately, the need is huge. And it keeps growing. It does. does it, it keeps growing, yeah. which is a good thing, but, you know, we okay. wish there wasn't such a need. Yeah. So children K through? Uh, Pre-K through 12th grade Pre we serve, yep. Okay. And at the Day for Hope, they get everything they need to be ready for school mm -hmm. so that they start the first day of school on an even playing field to their peers. So they have everything the child who has everything has. They're Clothes not showing up with that, you know, hand-me-down backpack and those torn sneakers. Yeah. So. Oh. We bring in um, doctors and nurses and we do their back to school physical as well as their sports exam if they need it to play on a team. Mm -hmm. We bring in dentists and hygienists to do a cleaning, um, cleaning instruction, a dental checkup, and fluoride treatment. Okay, where does that take place? Now when you say you bring mm -hmm. them in, where do you yeah, bring them so to? Yeah, so it's at the local churches. They're the ones hosting it on okay. their campus. Okay, so each individual church. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, hairstylists and barbers do their back to school haircut. We bring in photographers to do their back-to-school photo because those packages are expensive, as mm -hmm. well as a family portrait because we learned early on that some of these families had never had a family I portrait know. before. I, I saw that, as I mentioned, on yeah. your website, and I just that just made me smile. Oh, gosh. Because <laughs> that's yeah. not something you think of it in terms of something that what people need. Yeah, and the families are so blessed by it. A very quick story is Barbara Banks, who's a renowned photographer in yep. town. You might know her, yep. right? She does a lot of high profile weddings and the galas. Um, she volunteers at Church of the Redeemer and the first year they did it nine years ago, mm -hmm. she was uh, their photographer and has been every year. And she had a little girl that she took her back to school photo of and then she called mom in. It was just mom and the little girl in the family portrait. Aww. And she took this beautiful family portrait and as mom was exiting, mom handed Barbara a note. To this day, Barbara still has it as a screensaver on her phone. And it said, um, thank you for this family portrait of my daughter and I. It's the first one ever. I was recently diagnosed with brain cancer. Oh my God. And given six months to live and this is something my daughter will cherish for the rest of her life. And Barbara came to us with tears in her eyes and she said, I get it now. I get why I'm here. I'm not here because I'm a renowned photographer and I know how lighting hits a face and I can you know, supply the best quality ink right. or paper. I'm here because I just made a difference in, in the life of that child yeah, forever. forever. And she said, and so for as long do. as I have breath, I will be part of this Aww. program. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, it was yeah. as sad as it was, it was like Barbara found her purpose and you know, it was just such a blessing, a piece that we gave yeah. that mom. Yep. You know? Forever. Yeah. And a child. Yeah. So what are your goals and needs for the upcoming year? 
Let's get back to so what So our need. goal is, as I said, to serve 2,675 children. Right. Mm -hmm. um, in order to do that, we need an army of volunteers. Um, okay. We are always looking for more churches to partner with. Mm -hmm. So a church can become a host where we have it on their campus. Mm -hmm. They can become a partner where they go to a campus and help another church. Or they could be a sponsor where they just help okay. sponsor kids. Um, we look for doctors and nurses in the community, mm -hmm. um, dentists and hygienists, hairstyles and barbers, and photographers. Okay, so these are the kind of continuing pieces that you need. Yes, to those go are the on. pieces we need for Day for Hope itself, okay. um, which is the back to school part. And then we do what's called continuing hope, which is how can we serve these kids all year round? Mm -hmm. You know, we got them ready for school. We don't want to do this one touch event and never see these kids again. Mm -hmm. We want to build a relationship and pour sure. into their lives. Sure. So we encourage the churches to maybe do a fall festival and invite the whole school this time okay. or do a Thanksgiving dinner for the families or Christmas gifts. Go have lunch with a child whose mom is working three jobs and can never have lunch with her. Um, go be part of a reading mentoring program. Mm -hmm. Anything you can do. So this is what do. volunteers can do to help you. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. We have great community partners. That's great. It takes a village to it raise does. a child these Absolutely. days. Absolutely. And so many. Yes. Well, thank you for all your hard work. Oh, thank you for having me. I Absolutely. really appreciate it. Thanks. After the break, spring is in the air and Tropiflora stops by to tell us about their upcoming spring festival. We're a few weeks into spring, so it's only appropriate to hold a spring festival. Robin and Scott Lockhart from Tropiflora are here to tell us what to expect. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for bringing all of this beautiful flora mm -hmm. to us. Yeah, it <laughs> yes. looks, I, you'll have to leave it. I like the setting a lot more. <laughs> so um, tell us about your business and how it started, and then we'll get a little bit to the festival in a little bit. Well, we are a family business. Mm -hmm. uh, it, our parents started it in 1976, so it's now 42 years we've been wow. in business. And we were raised uh, in, in the business of collecting plants, selling plants, propagating plants. Mm -hmm. and um, But then you left for a while. We did. We both went away to college and uh, started our own careers mm -hmm. and families. And then we decided, well, with the kids here, we want to come back and be around mom yeah. and the family. And that's when we made the transition. OK. So you've been there now 15-ish years. 15 years. About eight years. About eight. Years, about eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and some of the people you said have been there for over 30 yes, years. Yes, we you, have right? 15 so to 20 all... employees, and some are very long timers, yeah. over 30 years. So they're, they're experts. 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 So yes. any questions, they, they've Absolutely. got the answers, right? Absolutely. The questions. So let's find out about what you brought, and these are some of the things that we're going to see at the Spring Festival. Yes. Okay. Yes. So most of the stuff that we brought are uh, from the Bromeliad family, and Bromeliads are what we know them for. We're a collector nursery. Um, just different examples of blooms and colors and foliage. They're beautiful. Um, Tillandsia's air plants, pineapples is actually the most mm -hmm. popular bromeliad in the whole entire world. The, this one here? No, the one on the this table right there, the pineapple. Oh my gosh, yeah. yep. it's a pineapple. Uh oh, and we have a few of those around. It's okay. But primarily we're a collector nursery that uh -huh. sells the wholesale, retail. We sell to everybody that comes in and wants to buy it. Okay. So obviously I, I don't know my plants very well. No. What is this one? That <laughs> is, a, it's part of the Bromelia family. That's a Varicia. And that one is an interior plant that they bred that one so it can grow inside in oh, deep shade. I like that. Now that you start to notice them, you'll see them at banks and hotel lobbies, restaurants. Okay. okay. So the festival, when is it? It April is April 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's a three-day event, okay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we have not just all of our plants available for sale, but we have music, live steel drums. The Oaks Barbecue will be there on site serving their delicious this food. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Friday, all, Saturday, and Sunday, all, all three days. days plus okay. other vendors from around the state of Florida. So we have the Peter's Crotons bringing in Crotons, and then we have the Plant Place bringing in their garden uh, plants and then we have central florida ferns bringing in all kinds of ferns artists a new fruit tree vendor a new artist okay so it's a little something for everybody yeah. yard arts stuff like yeah, that. The, yeah I, I i was reading it says you have like home decor or you mm -hmm. have t-shirts that yeah. are plant-based just dyes. like the one he's got on there mm -hmm. ah. yeah. artist on site doing that 
So, so are they silk screened? Is that what they're doing? Mm -hmm. Or they're painting? Yeah, he, he does okay. that. Silk screen and awesome. painting. Okay. Oh. So free is there a free charge? admission, free parking, okay. dog friendly, you know, pet friendly. Mm -hmm. Kid friendly, free coffee and donuts until we run out. <laughs> so, so get there early. Yeah, what time do you early. open? Eight o'clock. It's eight to five sat, uh, Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday it's ten to three. Okay. A shorter day. Um, and what what type of clientele do you have? What do you see? Typically for our for the festival, it's everybody under the sun mm -hmm. comes out. Yeah. Um, it's it's a nice mixture of everyone from young to old. You know, it's yeah. a great thing. Mm -hmm. As far as who we sell to, is we sell to zoos, botanical gardens. Uh, we donate a lot to Selby Gardens, uh, herbarium specimens. Mm -hmm. Our biggest client ever was the government of Singapore. Uh, we, oh my God. we sold over 300,000 plants to fund the Gardens by the Bay project over a course of five years. And all of our plants are, st are still there growing and uh, Amazing. It, was a, it was a huge yeah. deal. Good you for know. you. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, a family, that's wonderful. It is, it's grown yeah. like this. How many years have you been doing this now? The 42. Festival. Oh, the festival's 18 years we've been doing this. And you have another one as well, In the right? fall. Okay. Yes, we have one in the fall and one and in the spring. And when does that one take place? It's going to be in October. Yeah. Okay, so more we'll details to come more on More details that. to come on that, yeah. Okay, anything you'd like to close with um, that our audience should know? Uh, come out, it should be beautiful weather. Um, yeah. It's a neat okay. thing. Come, come talk with us. Ask about us. We, we will help with whatever questions you have. And you know, somebody on site should know at least what we're talking about. And okay. Try it's to not help you, get your somebody plans. else, right? It's exactly. We, yeah. Great. It, it's a fun event. Great. Thank you both for being here. Thank Thanks. you. The Whiskey Obsession Festival is almost here. Find out what you can expect from the event all next on Suncoast FYI. We're joined in the studio now by the president of Whiskey Obsession Festival, Turner Moore. Welcome back. Thank you. Good morning. Nice to see you. A uh, year has gone by very quickly. It has. Six years have gone by quickly. Oh, gosh. Six years it's going to be. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm sure you've got something new and exciting for 2018. We have a couple of new about. things. Uh, one of the most exciting is our Women of Whiskey Brunch. It's at the Sarasota Yacht Club Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. So we have three women from the industry to talk about their experiences. It's moderated by Peggy No Stevens, and she's from the extended No family in Kentucky who've been distillers for generations. Mm -hmm. And it is emceed by our local Jennifer Wells, who, who started the Sarasota Whiskey Society. Excellent, excellent. So the um, the speakers are actual whiskey makers. They're ambassadors. They're ambassadors. Yeah, international brand ambassadors okay. who uh, work in the industry for many years. Okay. Now I know there's a lot that goes into any festival, but this looks overwhelming. I looked at some of the videos on your website and mm -hmm. all of the people and all of the whiskeys and the glasses and everything. What goes into putting on like the largest festival in the U.S.? Well, we start work in October. It's a very small team. Mm -hmm. I have a business partner who uh, actually comes from the whiskey industry, so he has a great perspective in that way. And we start to reach out to all the brands in October, November, and start to send out the press releases. And fortunately, because we've been doing it for a few years, we have a tremendous uh, response from the industry mm -hmm. as well as from consumers and uh, from the media. So there's a lot of work and it's a challenge, yeah. but uh, it's a lot of return vendors exactly. come back year after yeah. year. So and, and some new ones. I'm excited. We've got uh, okay. a lot of new Irish whiskey this year okay. and some new smaller craft ones like right. Balconis yes. from Texas is uh, our one of the one of the ones that's a first time participant. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about some more of the whiskeys because you're going to be serving a lot of different kinds. This is only a, obviously a very small sample. Right. On Friday night, we have around 200 whiskeys and cocktails. And I mentioned cocktails because we have have signature cocktails from the Gator Club, mm -hmm. Casca Nail, uh, Madison's, Louis, and oh, I wish I could remember the fifth one right okay. off the bat. But well, if you do, we'll we'll get them yeah, in there. Great. So, but we have some cocktails as yep. uh, in addition to all the neat whiskey. In, in, in are they using whiskey in Absolutely. their drinks? Yeah, in their exactly. Signature so drinks? there may be some Very Manhattans. Cool. There could be some old fashions, okay. uh, punch, different things. All right. So as I said, Balcones from Texas is a new participant. Ann Miller, the international brand ambassador from Abelauer, is flying in all the way from Scotland. 
to participate in the Friday events and then the Saturday Women's Brunch. Mm -hmm. uh, Old Pulteney is participating in a number of events. They're bringing in their brand ambassador, Andy Hanna. Uh, Stranahan's is coming back. Rob Dietrich is their distiller from Denver, and I think this is his third year. He mm -hmm. loves it. Uh, he's bringing in a bottle of Snowflake, and something like 2,000 people line up once a year when they announce the special release and sell it only at the distillery. So wow. uh, he's bringing in a bottle for our VIP hour. Oh, okay. And uh, I'll just mention Angel's Envy is uh, sponsoring our uh, late night after party at Maid Restaurant on Friday night, which is free. And then uh, Glenn Goyne, I brought this one. They're a great partner, and their brand ambassador's coming to talk about their scotch. Okay, so the event starts when? Wednesday afternoon is the Bartender Academy. Okay. That's industry only. Right. Wednesday night, we have a dinner at the Yacht Club. Thursday, we have a bourbon lunch at the Francis. Thursday night, we have the panel at the Francis. Then we have a late night event at the Gator Club, the history of bourbon through bluegrass. And Bernie <laughs> Lovers is gonna play guitar and sing songs. Uh, and then Friday night, we have the Abel Hour uh, pre-show class at 5 at Michael's, mm -hmm. the main event, the grand tasting, okay. the after party. Saturday, we have the women's brunch. Saturday afternoon, we have a cigar, beer, wow. and bourbon, fun, casual thing at the Gator Club from 4 to 6 with J-Dubs Brewing. Okay. Um, so lots and lots going on. So can people yep. buy, like... A package deal? Or no, one everything's day? a la carte. Okay. Yeah, uh, everything's a la carte. Some events are free. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most exciting things is Saturday night, uh, April 14th, we have four bands, and uh, this event is our Whiskey Rock Street Party. It's sponsored by uh, the Sarasota Downtown Merchants Association, and J Dub's Brewing is our big beer partner, and we'll have a couple uh, cocktail bars in the street, okay. but uh, that's free, so come on out okay. to the street party. So people can still get tickets for Absolutely. anything, everything's still yep. available. WhiskeyObsessionFestival.com. A couple things are sold out like VIP tickets for Friday, but lunches, dinners, panels, there's still tickets available. Cool. Great. Well, thank you. Have a wonderful event again this year. Thanks, Nancy. Nice seeing you. Yep. Have any plans this weekend? We have a couple of fun suggestions when we come back, so don't go away. Coming up this weekend on the Sun Coast, it's the 32nd annual Run for the Turtles on Siesta Key Beach. Registration begins at 6.30 a.m. And this weekend is the 16th annual Downtown Sarasota Art and Craft Festival. The event runs from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday at Five Points Park and Central Avenue. If you would like to promote your community event on Sun Coast FYI, we would love to hear from you. Just call us at 941-361-4333. To view previous episodes, go to snntv.com under programming. I'm Nancy O'Neill, and we'll see you next Friday on Suncoast FYI.